Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Welcome again, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, I believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, O Lord. We come now to Heavenly Father in prayer thanking you for being God and being God all by yourself. Because of who you are, we worship you. Because of who you are, we give you praise. Because of who you are, O oh God, we love you. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for loving us first. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us when we couldn't even keep ourselves. Thank you, Lord, this day that you woke us up, clothed us in our right minds, and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We praise you, God, and we give you glory and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have provided for us and all the things that you do for us, things that we know and things that you're doing behind the scenes that we have no idea what's going on. So, Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus now over this conference call and over this Facebook technology and all of that, Lord. We just ask you to just bless today. Lord, just have your way. Help us, the Lord, as we get ready to study this word and just anoint us afresh. Bless us all that we might be hearers and doers of your word. And Lord, most of all, we want your presence with us in us and to come through us we thank you for your presence because where your presence is there is power thank you lord by the power of your holy spirit we thank you and i lord and savior jesus christ's name your son we say thank you amen and amen of uh, this morning's lesson is <clears throat> dealing with God's covenant with the return exiles. God's covenant with the return exiles. Um, it is from Nehemiah chapter 9, Nehemiah chapter 9, starting at verse 32, going all the way to 38, and then Nehemiah chapter 10, verses 28, and 29. It's interesting that they call this God's covenant with the return exiles. Um, this is a portion of scripture where there is a prayer going on. Um, most believe that the prayer was being led by Ezra and um, this prayer is praying for the people individually and the whole entire nation of Israel after they return from exile. And so we're going to begin reading out of the uh, New King, uh, no, the King James Version of the Bible. And then when we go through the lesson, we're going to be looking at it from the New Living Translation. So starting at Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 32. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keeps covenants and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee that has come upon us, on our kings, on our princesses, on our priests, on our prophets, and on our fathers, on all they all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. How be it thou art just in all that is brought upon us, for thou hast done right 
but we have done wickedly. Neither have our kings, our princesses, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law, nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies, wherewith thou didst testify against them. For they have not served thee in their king in that for they have not served thee in their kingdom and in their and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turn they from their wicked ways. Behold, we are servants this day for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the goods thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. And it yield much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also they have dominion over our bodies, over our cattle, and at the pleasure, at, I mean, at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. And because of all of this, we make a sure covenant and write it and write it. Our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it. Now we go into chapter 10, verse 28. Chapter 10, verse 28. And it reads, and the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Naphthenims, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the law of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. They clay cave to their brothers and their nobles and entered into a curse into an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our God and his judgments and his statutes. Amen, amen. That is the reading of our text. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 32 through 38, and then Nehemiah chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. Our memory verse comes from verse 33 of chapter 9, and it reads, How be it, thou art just in all that is brought upon us, for thou hast done right, but we have done wickedly. Um, in the New Living Translation, it reads, Every time you punish us, you are being just. We have sinned greatly, and you gave us only what we deserved. Oh, have mercy. The key concept of this lesson is that uh, God was faithful to his children even when they turned their back on him. God was faithful to his children even when they turned their back on him. Our keys for kids the message that we want the children to get out of this lesson is number one, Nehemiah and the people of his land were in trouble because of their sins. Number two, he, pr uh, he prayed to God to forgive them and help them. And then number three, although they turned from God before, God still listened to their pray, pray, prayer, forgave them, and help them. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, because God still listens to us, even though we have fallen short and 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 missed the mark and sinned against God. He still listens to us and he's ready to forgive us and to help us. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so as we look at this lesson today, we're going to, first of all, have the learning facts to understand the covenant that God's people made with him after the exile. The biblical principles that we want to understand in this lesson is that God's faithfulness in contrast with the ancient Israel faithlessness. Amen. And then the daily application that we want to get from this lesson is to have them uh, to be mean, meaningfully make uh, recommitment to follow the Lord. And, and I'm, I'm going to say it this way, to, to rededicate ourselves to following the Lord, to rededicate ourselves to doing what is right in the sight of God. Hallelujah. And so this lesson, this lesson is broken down into two parts. Pleading with God. That, that's our first section. Um, uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, 32 to 37. And then the, the pledge to God. And that's going to be Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 38. And then chapter 10, verse 28 and, and 29. And so with this, with this lesson, let, let's, let's, let's start digging in deep in it. I'm going to take my time in reading each of the sections, uh, uh, you know, go kind of verse by verse because it's such a long, long portion for the first section. Um, but but we we see here in the background of this lesson is that uh, that um, um, Nehemiah, this is the book of Nehemiah. And in, in the book of Nehemiah, we, we find that that um he 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 was not a priest he was not a prophet but he was a cupbearer for the king the king um 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 so let me get artisexier and uh, this this was the king that that he was a cupbearer while they were in captivity and and people the people of 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 Israel had been released from captivity earlier on. They had been in captivity because of the sins of, of the kings and all the people prior to, to this, and they went into captivity. And now uh, uh, God had already prophesied that there was going to be a king named Cyrus that was going to come and 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 uh, release them and send them back home. And so people had started coming back home. It was like they came in and in, 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 at different times and and when they came they started building back the temple and all of that but they didn't build the wall around the temple uh and and and, and at the time in which they were doing this was going all this was going on that the people who were left in in Jerusalem the people who were left in the promised land had, had now married and intermingled with the, the natives of the area. And, and, and they were giving them such a hard time. They were giving the children of Israel, Israel such a hard time when they came back. And, and that, that they had reasons. We, we call them in the new Testament Samaritans. And that's a mixture of Israelites and the people in the area, the Canaanites of, of, of that area. And so the people who was from coming out of exile considered themselves pure-blooded Israelites, and they had problems with the half-breed or half-blood Israelites. And so it, it was some issues going on. But anyway, um, Nehemiah got word that, that the wall hadn't been built, and he went into prayer, he went into fasting, asking God what should he do. And when, when, when God answered him, he said, just, 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 just go on and ask the king. And he went and got asked the king and the king granted him, uh, uh, the journey to, to go back to, to Israel and to set up everything and build this wall and, and gave him all the materials that he needed. And he, he inspired the people along with Ezra to build the wall in less than 52 days. 
I said, oh, hallelujah, that's that's some inspiration. And so after they built the wall, they 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 had a celebration where they started reading the word of God and committed themselves to God. And then we come to this prayer that 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 they made this prayer that they gave to God, which also led them into a covenant with God. They re uh, dedicated themselves to the original covenant with God. Oh, hallelujah. And so it reads, let's go to uh, the, uh, verse 32 of Nehemiah chapter 9. And he starts off, and now our God, the great and mighty and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love, do not let all the hardship we have suffered seem insignificant to you. Great trouble has come upon us and upon our kings and our leaders and priests and prophets and ancestors, all of your people from the days when the king of Assyria first triumphed over us until now. He, 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 in this prayer, and some say Ezra actually prayed the prayer, not Nehemiah. They call this Ezra's prayer, and, that, and that's okay with me. But the whole thing is, is that this prayer was a national prayer. This prayer was a prayer that was being led for all the people of Israel. And, 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 and he says, oh, I know God, that you're great and mighty and an awesome God. The, the new the the, the uh, uh, King James version says a terrible God, but that's what it means to be awesome, awesome. He's an awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love. That's mercy, God's mercy. He keeps he he's a God full of mercy, and he keeps us with unfailing love. And then he says, "Don't don't." The, don't let the hardship we have suffered seem insignificant. This this is a plea to God. He's pleading to God. Please, God, don't don't just overlook our trouble. Don't don't count it as a little thing. This, this thing is hard that we're going through. And, and then he says, great trouble has come upon us and upon our leaders and priests and prophets and ancestors and all of our people. From the days when the king of Assyria first triumphed over us. In other words, this whole captivity thing, we've been going through hell, God. And he and he's pleading with God. But then in verse 32, he says, 33, excuse me, he says, Every time you punish us, you were being just. We have sinned greatly. And you gave us on, gave us only what we deserve. Oh mercy, God! That's that's it. That's it. He 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 said, "Look, we know that you were just in punishing us. You were just in allowing us to go into captivity. You were just, God." He, you, 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 you weren't being mean to us. You weren't because we understand that you discipline those that you love. We deserved it because we had sinned against you. Listen to verse 34. He describes how they have sinned. He says, our kings, leaders, and priests, and ancestors did not obey your law and listen to the warnings in your commandments and laws. That's it. The, the the kings, the priests, every king after King David, they just went down, 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 down. They were worshiping idols. They were intermarrying with people outside of the, the kingdom of Israel. They, they, they were not following after the law of Moses, the law that God had, had given them. And, and, and all of this had punishment tied to it. Uh, when you go and read Deuteronomy and you, you'll find that if, if your people do this, this is going to happen. And that's the, if you do wrong, this, this is going to happen to you. If you do right, this is going to happen to you. And, and they didn't believe it. But here we have now this, this, this prayer 
And at this point, he's confessing, God, we confess we have sinned. We didn't do right. We confess that our leaders and all of us did not obey your law. Oh, hallelujah. If we need forgiveness for our sins, we must first start with confession. We must first start with confession. And they confessed it. And listen to verse 35. Even while they had their own kingdom, they did not serve you. Though you showered your goodness on them, you gave them a large fertile land and they refused to turn from their wickedness. God, God continued to bless them. But yet, they did not serve God. Wow. See, 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 mercy, mercy is, 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 is there for us. Mercy is, is, is when God, God uh, doesn't give us what we truly deserve. Okay? And we've done wrong. We deserve to be punished. But God's mercy holds off the punishment. But then not only does he give us mercy, he gives us grace. And grace is what he gives us when uh, 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 he gives us even more than what we deserve. He gives us such blessings. And that's how he had done with the children of Israel. He showed them, them grace and mercy. And yet, oh, hallelujah, yet. They still turned and did things wicked. And so verse 36 says, so now that we are slaves in the land of plenty that you gave our ancestors for their enjoyment, we are slaves here in this good land. Oh, mercy. That, that he, he's back now describing his, their present situation. They are slaves. In the land that God had promised them. Because they were still under the rulership of, 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 of another king. And listen to how, how he explains it in verse, verse uh, uh, um, 37. The lust produce of this land piles up in the hands of the kings you have set over us because of our sin. They have power over us. Our livestock, we serve them at their pleasure, and we are in great misery. Oh, man, this is an awesome prayer of pleading with God for, for your situation. And, 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 and we must understand, whatever we're going through in life, no, no matter if it's because of our own sins or, or whether it's just because of circumstances and situations, we need to go to God in prayer. We need to plead with God and we need to talk with God. Don't run from him. Run to him. He's still a God of love, unfailing love. He's still a God of mercy and grace and loving kindness. And we need to run to him and let him know what's going on in our life. And so that is the plea. That was the plea that, that they gave. That was the plea. They confessed their sins. They pleaded with God because of their unfaithfulness. They prayed to God and let him know how bad their situation was. But now, confession alone is not enough. When you have sinned, your confession of your sins is good. But then following confession, there needs to be repentance. Yes, there needs to be repentance. That means that you change the direction you were going and go in the direction of God. 
That means that you turn away from all of the wicked ways that you had just confessed about and then follow after God's ways. And so, in verse 38, listen to verse 38 of chapter 9. The people responded, in view of all this, we're making a solemn promise and putting it in writing. On this sealed document are the names of our leaders and Levites and priests. Yeah, they 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 made a a a a, a, a rededication. They made a recommitment to God. They repented and said, "We are going to do what is right in the sight of God." Oh, hallelujah! That 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 is just so awesome. The people responded like that. Oh, I can't pass this up. I just can't pass this up. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, God says, turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. Forgive their sin. And heal their land. Yes. We need this all around the world. We need this in our country. We need this in our state. We need this in our community. We need this in our church. We need this in our home. If my people. If God's people. Would, would just humble themselves. Seek his face. And pray and call on his name. Oh hallelujah. Turn from my wicked ways. He can heal us. He will forgive us. All the troubles in the world, God is ready and willing to take care of them for us. He's ready to bless us. And so they made this covenant. They made this rededication. And they sealed it in a document. And everybody put their names, all the names of the leaders and the Levites and the priests committed themselves to following after the word of the Lord. Now, we jump down to verse uh, chapter 10, verse 28. Listen to what it says. Then the rest of the people. The priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the temple servers, and all who had separated themselves from the pagan people of the land in order to obey the law, together with their wives, their sons, their daughters, and all who were old enough to understand, joined their leaders and bound themselves with an oath. They swore a curse on themselves if they failed to obey the law of God as issued by the servant Moses, and they solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commandments, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our God. Chapter 10 is, is a list of all of the names of the priests and the, and the uh, Levites and the leaders who signed their, 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 this, this document. And back then, they had what we call, we would call signet rings or, or, or rings that, that had their unique uh, signature on it. And they would stamp that thing in, in the wax and to say that they were committed to what was going on. They were going to agree to this commitment. Most of the time when we look at covenants in the Bible, we see a covenant that God is making with his people. But these people came up out from under the covenant as they were unfaithful and went into to, to, to exile, into captivity because of their sins. They are now recommitting themselves to the covenant that God had already made. And they showed their their, their 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 repentance by saying that we're going to separate ourselves from all of the pagans in the land in order to obey the law of God. They didn't want to get caught up into the pagans' idolatry. They didn't want to get caught up into the pagan ways, and they committed themselves to following the decrees and the laws of God. Oh, hallelujah. 
Have you made that kind of commitment? Were you ready to, to, to just say, Lord, I'm, I'm committed to you all the way. I, I, I've always told this joke and I, I have to have to bring it at this point because it's, it, it, it's very relevant. There was a um, pig and a, and a chicken walking down the road and they saw this poor family that didn't have much to eat or no food at all. And the chicken said to the pig, why don't we help this family? Why don't, why don't we go and make them breakfast? And the pig looked at the chicken. And the chicken said, well, I'm, I'm going to give some eggs. Will you give some bacon? <laughs> that pig looked at him and just laughed. He said, look, all you're doing is making a contribution to breakfast by giving a couple of eggs. But if I help them with breakfast and give them bacon, I'm making a full commitment. Yeah. God wants us to make a full commitment and give all to him. Give our all to Jesus and watch him bless us over and over again. Oh, hallelujah. Thoughts to ponder for this lesson. 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The children of, of Israel at this time, they did just that, and we should also do that ourselves. We need to understand that we can make any choices in the world that we want to make. And we have the right and the free will to choose whatever we want to choose. But because of the choices we make, they always have consequences. And we can never choose the consequences of our choices. God is more than worthy. Therefore, we should honor him by committing ourselves to him. In conclusion with this lesson, when we know that we've done something wrong, something sinful, we should always reach out to Jesus for help. He knows that we are not perfect and that we cannot be great people without him. Jesus is the only one who will always love us and care for us and protect us every moment of our lives. When it comes to prayer, we need to pray. Oswald Chambers says this, prayer does not fit us for the great work. Prayer is the great work. I'm going to say that again. Prayer does not fit us for the great work. Prayer is the great work. My brothers and sisters, be committed to praying because that is the greatest work you could ever do. Let us pray. Father, forgive us of our prayerlessness at times. Help us to give prayer the priority your son and the first century church gave to it. Let us not view prayer as just another tool. May we seek to be your instruments who pray and serve only to bring glory to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We ought to reflect on our past, but pray for our future. As we get ready to close this lesson, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation. So please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. 
I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule in the reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe in your heart, you are now saved. Thank you, God, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. We're now going to close our Facebook, and we're going to go into the our conference call. And if you have any questions, thoughts, or comments that you want to add to the lesson, you can call in and join us in the conference call at one. I mean, at nine one zero two one eight zero five three one nine one zero two one eight zero five three one. We really would enjoy you coming and joining us, commenting about the lesson, or even asking questions. May God bless you and keep you on Facebook until we meet again.